the Rolling Stones? I said, no, they passed it. That was in 1975. Shows how long you, long you can be, isn't it? <clears throat> anyway, that's when I wrote this song. Thank you. 
Come 
close to me Thousand smile She sets me free It's alright, she says It's alright Take anything you want from me i 
first time in Philadelphia.
Can we have Dave Abbott next, please?
stayed in her palace Just about live for my tale Live for my tale Chances had no turning back, no turning back. Thank you. 
This, uh, this is another one. This one called Ride.
Let's sing next, please. I'm going to sing this time. <laughs> I think when addressing an audience, it's always important to say hello first and ask where everyone is. I don't like to just dive in, all guns blazing. Bad time a bloke, I'll skip that bit. Hello, my name is Jamie Wilcock and I'm 21 years old. That sounds a lot like an audition to take me out. How are you all tonight? You have a good night? Yay. Yay. Good. I guess I'm here tonight, really, because I wanted to do stand-up before the world ends. I don't actually believe that the world is going to end on the 21st of December, but just to be sure, I'm going to do my Christmas shopping last minute, which is the same as every other year, to be fair, because I'm a bloke. I find it ironic that the Mayans calendar ended the same year that One Direction got their first calendar. They must have known we was fucked. <laughs> I haven't actually got a problem with One Direction. They're just five lads living their dreams. Apart from Harry Styles, he's living his wet dreams. <laughs> I can't believe it's almost Christmas. It's actually my birthday Christmas day. That's not a lie, it's actually the fucking truth. I actually quite like it, but I get pissed off with the questions it brings. People ask me if me and my sister get the same amount of presents. Of course we don't. My mum and dad love me more. <laughs> I get asked if I get joint presents, but my mum and dad don't approve of me smoking. <laughs> the magic of Christmas is lost for me now that, I'm, now that I've... The magic of Christmas is lost on me now that I don't believe in Santa. I was gutted when my mum told me two years ago. If it wasn't for the Coca-Cola advert, I'd have lost faith in Christmas completely. I was a jumpy kid, so all the fake stories affected me. Think of it logically. Let's tell the kids that a fat bearded old man breaks into a house when they're asleep. Fucking great idea. Santa Claus wasn't even his real name, it was Saint Nick. He had two names, how fucking dodgy was that? <laughs> Most kids couldn't sleep Christmas Eve because they was excited. I couldn't sleep because I was fucking petrified. <laughs> Everyone used to leave out a glass of sherry for Santa, but there was this one kid in our school whose dad told him that Santa preferred a bottle of gin. And then we have the tooth fairy. Some little fairy that flies into my room and exchanges my discarded tooth, covered with blood, for a one pound coin. I had to sleep with a gum shoe, just in case she got greedy and wanted a few more. <laughs> I suppose in ways it was obvious. How the fuck Santa's grotto in both BHS and Woolworths? I should have clocked this earlier. And then comes the disappointment. The disappointment of knowing that your parents fooled you for 18 years. I was a gullible child. This is why kids turn to, no, this is why kids turn to drugs, to rebel. I'm from Swindon, so it's not like I made much of an effort to get here tonight. I love Swindon. I don't know why people say their home town, hometowns. It is brilliant here. Yeah, yeah. You all love Swindon? Yeah. You all proud of where you're from? 200% Swindon. Nice one. See, with Swindon, there's everything you need here. There's a big screen TV in the town centre for the homeless to watch BBC News. <laughs> the magic roundabout to fuck his heads up, and we have a Tesco with an escalator in it. Don't even get me started on the beautiful architecture of the David John Murray building. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the X Factor, but I'll be supporting Jarmaine Douglas all the way. So have a cheer for Jarmaine. So have a bigger cheer for Jarmaine. <laughs> I can't help but think though, that when Jarmaine got through X Factor auditions, that the thing on most people from Swindon's minds was that there's now a job opening at Asda. Although, to be fair, right, it, is, it is good for Swindon to have someone to support. It's a little bit shit when all we've had for 10 years is fucking Jamie Cullen. <laughs> well, I think my time's up now. Well, I hope it is, because I ran out of jokes. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's it, and uh, I'm not really good at saying goodbye, so this is it. Stand well <laughs> sideways. Paper packing, bubble wrap, love to make it crack and snap. Got to wrap up all this crap, cardboard boxes, cardboard boxes. You could join in on that last line if you want. Flat pack furniture takes ages. Instructions are just like comic pages. Every time our address changes. Cardboard boxes, cardboard boxes. How can we have so much stuff? Is 20 t-shirts not enough? Packing leaves me feeling rough. Cardboard boxes, cardboard boxes. We should have numbered every box. I found a football and lost my socks. 
is all this ticking, bombs or clocks, cardboard boxes, cardboard boxes. How can our peas be so heavy? And why do we need to have so many? Let's go digital and not have any. Cardboard boxes, cardboard boxes. Too much pressure, too much pain, I'm never doing this again. Moving house is just insane. Cardboard boxes, cardboard boxes. And that's enough, cardboard boxes. Thanks. I've got a hell of a buzz up here, David. Hey? I've got a hell of a buzz up here. We can't hear it here. No? Okay. Um, this next one is based on a true story. I know that here at the Vic you like story ones. Um, and it's about uh, a group of guys that uh, in the middle 60s decided that Tuesday nights would be a night, that's better, thanks, that they all got together just for a beer and chew the fat. And believe it or not, those guys, or the core of those group of guys, are still meeting now, 50 years later. So this one's for them. Uh, I've sort of jazzed up the rest of it a bit to make it a bit more interesting. It's called Tuesday Night Poker Club. I should say instantly that when any of this core group went away, when they came back, they always slotted right into that Tuesday night, just as though they'd never been gone. When he came back home after having been gone so long, he ran around the boys to check that poker was still on. They all still met on Tuesday night. They all still look. Sorry, they all still loved to play, and they knew that he would fit right in, like he'd never been away. So when he knocked upon their door, the boys were sure surprised. He brought somebody with him, a little cutie by his side. We never brought women to the game before, but we shuffled the seats around and agreed he never got a woman like that from the lost and found. We pulled a chair out for her and sucked in our beer bellies. <laughs> I wished I'd worn a tie instead of my own green wellies. She crossed her legs and smiled at me and my heart began to soar. He didn't deserve a woman like that, of that I was damn sure. We knew he was nearly 66. She said she was 23. We marvelled that with a girl like that he still knew what to do. And if I was taking bets from the boys, and give them ten to one, but she never got a tan like that from lying in the sun. We'd not seen him for a while and something was not the same. He was still the guy that we all knew, but with a subtle change. It was in the way he moved his mouth and the way he spoke. Something more refined about him, not quite the same old bloke. He'd given us a lot to think about, our old friend the mystery man. He seemed not to have a care in the world. He didn't give a damn. But when we noticed his dentistry, we guessed he'd some new found wealth. He sure as hell didn't get those teeth on the national health. She'd asked if she could join the game, and how could we refuse? She had the look of an innocent, I wondered how much she'd lose. I have to say, as we started to play, she was a great distraction. And as they won more and more, I was losing my grip on the action. Meanwhile, our homecoming boy sat resplendent in his suit. He was looking immaculate. She was still looking cute. And as they raked in another pot, I was slowly becoming certain that he sure as hell never got that suit from Top Man or from Burton. It didn't take long for us to wonder if we were being conned. This was getting to be a joke, if not some way beyond. As more and more of the boys were forced to dig deep in their pockets, they muttered under their breath about their thin and empty wallets. We couldn't believe the speed at which this woman shuffled and dealt. The boys were all wiped out and beyond any further help. And as they walked off with our cash, we knew she made us look like fools. And she never learned to play cards like that at any Sunday school. And maybe we should add one more to our book of rules. No dogs, no checks, no women at our Tuesday Poker School. I'm sorry about this hesitancy, I've got some new specs and I'm still running them in. Um, I think in most streets, in, uh, probably in England, there's one lady who loves to gossip and was always peering through the lace curtains. 
anything untoward that happens in the street, you can see the curtains twitching by there. And in the street where I live, we have a lady who's just like that, and her name is Rachel. And this is called Rachel. Rachel was a gossip, she'd gossip with the best. Anything new that she might learn, she had to get off her chest. She had to tell her neighbour what it was she'd learned, then gossip with the other neighbour while the first one's back was turned. You could always see her curtains twitch when a car stopped in the road. How many got out, how many went in, if the car was new or old. And heaven forbid that one of the widows should have a gentleman caller. Rachel would be at the garden fence, wishing she was a foot taller. <laughs> At any mention of the doctor, her interest knew no bounds. She'd sit and watch from behind her lace, eating chocolates by the pound. But the highlight of her existence was the sight of a funeral hearse. She'd be outside directing traffic and making matters worse. A police car! My God, a police car! Had her almost foaming at the mouth. There must be something here to broadcast north and south. And there's no doubt about it, if someone was ever taken away, Rachel will be in seventh heaven, a gossip's perfect day. Sorry, perfect day. That's the end of that one. <laughs> Actually, I do her this service. She has a heart of gold. But she still twitches her curtains. Um, I realised I've been doing a lot about leaving home. I don't quite know what that should be, but that's what I was doing. In the, uh, I thought about the English tradition of leaving home to join the circus. And then I thought about the American equivalent, which I guess is leaving home to join the rodeo. So this one's called Rodeo Rider. Mama, you've been crying for a couple of days or more. Now the time has come, my bag is standing there by the door. I'm saying goodbye to my old dog, we're fooling around on the floor. He's thinking that I won't be back, but I know he's not quite sure. I'm 22 years old and I've lived at home too long. My friends have all packed up and moved. They're all long gone. My lift is waiting outside and I'm whistling a tuneless song. And looking at the sky, I think I smell rain, but then I could be wrong. At the station, there's a sign that says my train is late. I try to fill the time up with cups of coffee and stale cake. It's not too great a start to the biggest move I'll ever make. But I feel the time is right. I'm 22 years old, for God's sake. At last I'm in my seat on the train heading south. All that coffee lest the nasty taste in my mouth. And the lies I told my mama as I left the house made me feel real bad. Mama don't eat much more in a house. I had to lie to Mama, I knew she wouldn't let it rest. She thinks I'm heading north to a job behind a desk. But a country boy like me could never pass that test. And a life like that would be hard for sure. And I got to be the best. So here I am, heading south into Mexico. Get me a job down there, riding in the rodeo. They were talking about it on the country music radio. But I know that job could kill me by tomorrow. It's almost guaranteed that I'm going to break some bones. But when Daddy died, my mum took out a couple of mortgage loans. And I'm a real ungrateful son. I always moaned and groaned. Sometimes I stayed out all night and never even phoned. I know I'll make big money as a rodeo rider. I'll be all over that big old bull just like some kind of spider. As time goes on, my name will be known statewide and maybe wider. Sponsor deals and private bets can be the big decider. Staying on that bull is after all just a knack, or so someone told me sometime back. Staying on the Bronco is just a knack, isn't it? Stand up. When there have been, especially when there have been ladies in the audience, I, I found that the sort of thing that can go down well is a, a smoochy romantic one. So I'll, uh, I'll finish off with a smoochy romantic one, despite the fact that there are ladies in the audience. But this, this is for you gentlemen, in that case. It's called Wondering Where You Are. 
I thought I saw someone I thought I recognised, though ray bands cast a shadow on your Obama scarred eyes. In the two-tone leather of a brand new car, the badge on the front said Jaguar. The man behind the wheel had ray bands too, blue lens aviators, vintage 72. I ran to the lights where the car was first in the queue. The lights changed much too fast, but I knew that it was you. You wore that silken scarf that you brought back from Milan. I always thought the colours brought out your perfect tan. You've got your hair tied up to stop it blowing in your face. And I'd put money down to say you've got your weekend case tucked away safe and sound in the Jaguar's boot with your boyfriend's weekend bag and his lightweight summer suit. This has all the signs of a long weekend for me at home alone and for you with your new boyfriend. I'd never been jealous of the friends you had before. Some of them still came around and knocked upon the door. When it's me that opens up, they're covered in confusion. They shuffle their feet and politely apologise for intrusion. But I guess it must be different with Mr Jaguar. And now it looks like I'll spend the weekend wondering where you are. Thanks for listening.